Yo, what's up? Yo, what's up, pepperoni masters? What's up, pepperoni masters? What you doing? Come on, let's go. Come on. Give me that ball. Give me that ball. Good girl. You ready? <laughs> you ready? Guess it. Oh, you <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of 60 Formula. Hope you're doing well today. Hope you're chillaxing on this beautiful Saturday, Husky Community. Oh look, Mr. Mr. B Spears brought the blue ball, but now I got the T-ball. You wanna play with this one? Huh? You want this one? Go get it. Oh! Give me that. You give me that, you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready, big boy? Are you ready, big boy? Mm. You making, you making the squeakies? You doing the squeakums? Yes, that squeak. <laughs> On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about fermination. I'm a terminator. Getting rid of all that floof on the cinnamon bun booty. If you got a Siberian Husky or you're thinking about getting one, you better be well aware that all of that floof is gonna be flying all over the place all the time. So in order to manage it, we need to do some proper grooming with something called a Firminator. Now really, you can get any kind of brush that has fine teeth on it. And by fine teeth, I mean just like these little tiny fine bristles, if you can see them, it helps get all of the floofiness out of the undercoat with dogs that have two coats. Now, a lot of people say that Furminators aren't good tools to use because they end up pulling out important hairs on your Husky's coat and overall they're kind of bad to use. That's not necessarily true. It all depends on how you're using it. If you use a Furminator the wrong way, yeah, it can actually be a little bit harmful to your pet's coat, but if you use it the right way, if you're using it effectively, you can get rid of 90% of the floof that's on your Husky's boof so that it doesn't go inside your home. 60% of the time, it works every time. That doesn't make sense. Now this right here is probably too small. I need to upgrade a little bit. There is a bigger size Furminator where it goes out like wider like this. You get maximum coverage. But any size Furminator will do just fine. Just make sure, you know, you get a bigger one than a smaller one because you don't want to be working for three and a half hours on your Husky's coat. But this one's going to be good for now. Now when it gets cold or it gets warm, Siberian Huskies start itching and scratching and all their flufification starts falling off. This is your cue to bust out that Furminator and start brushing your Husky's buns. Today we're going to be working on Britney Spears because he's got a whole bunch of loose fur. You can see it all in here. You can see all these things poking up. See, watch this. That's not even me pulling his, that's just already loose right there. And watch it fly away. So not only does it keep your Husky clean, not only does it keep them healthy, their coat shiny, it keeps your house clean as well. So let's practice some good hygiene, some good femination with our Siberian Fluffy. Now, one of the best tips of advice that I have for you whenever you're getting prepared to ferminate your Siberian Husky is make sure it's clean, make sure there's no rust on the teeth of the brush, and we're gonna do long strokes. So many people like to get into this and just dig and dig and dig in one spot where they see the hair, you know, peeking out. Start out with long strokes. You can see how much floof is already coming off just from these really gentle, long strokes. Not only is this going to be easy on your dog's coat, but it's also going to make them feel more comfortable. So many people have problems with their Husky sitting still whenever they want to ferminate them. If you make it an enjoyable experience, your Husky's going to be more willing to sit down and relax whenever you're grooming them. So start out with long brushes, long strokes, and make sure you're not digging into your Husky. Now there will be places on your Husky's coat where you're going to have to dig a little bit, but make sure you're doing long strokes. Do them as long as you possibly possibly can. Another thing that I find is if you sit in one spot and you dig and you dig and you dig, you start to irritate your husky skin and that's no bueno. So make sure you're going all over, even if you don't think that spot needs to be ferminated. Woohoo! Yeah, boy, you got some floofiness. <laughs> Look at all this stuff. This is nuts. Now, I know some of you may be wondering, is it okay to be ferminating your dog outside and having all the floof go outside? Is that like, dog, are you like, 
You littering? Totally fine. Actually, it's beneficial to the environment because birds, a lot of different types of birds, use husky hair to create nests. So all of this floof is gonna go off into the sky and some really cool bird mama is gonna pick it up and be like, ooh, this is gonna make the comfiest pillow. Woo! <laughs> It's like a husky melted. Now remember, if your husky's not willing to sit down for you, you can always coax them with a treat. Treats are the best way to convince your pup to just sit still for a second. Always go down. Always go in the direction of your husky's fur and make sure that you're not going against their coat. Going against their coat can make things really uncomfortable for your husky. Another tip I have for you guys is to make sure you're getting into spots where you typically wouldn't comb, like underneath your husky's chin, in their neck area, and in their armpits because hair does accumulate in these areas. so good dude wow <laughs> sneak attack <laughs> huskies love to play in their floof i don't know what to say <laughs> you okay bro you look insanely amazing wow your coat looks great anyways we're about to move again so i want to tell you guys a little bit about this place before we head out if you have any questions about fermentation fermenting your husky grooming their coat let us know down in the comments below typically huskies blow their coat about two times a year but it can happen more if the weather changes fairly often especially if you're down south in a more tropical climate so as i was saying we're about to move again so that means that this beautiful home we've been staying in for the past few months is about to be open to the public on airbnb for anyone to come and enjoy and vacation at this particular home is located on amelia island in fernandina beach florida if you've ever thought about going on a vacation to the beach getting away with your huscaroni pizzas this is the perfect location to do it it's located next Next to the historic downtown, next to tons of restaurants, and you're just a minute away from the beach, which are extremely dog friendly. We can't brag enough about how amazing Amelia Island is, and we're really sad to go, but this is your opportunity to come and stay at the home that 60 Formula stayed in. We filmed tons of episodes in this home, so if you're a huge fan of the channel, this may be a place that you'll want to stay at, and who knows, maybe you'll run into us on the island while you're here. We'll have all the information down below in the description, the link to the Airbnb, so that you can stay here and make your reservations if you're interested. As always, thanks for watching today's episode. We hope you enjoyed all the free tips and tricks that we have to offer when it comes to Siberian Huscaroni pizzas, and we'll see you next time with another episode of Guess What? You guessed it, whatever we make. Peace!